and we'll take a look at the earthquakes that we had today in Kilauea near the end of the video. The pulse of a volcano can be used to help predict its next eruption. If you see one of the videos just before this one, you'll see that Kilauea has recently had an earthquake swarm and it seems that it could be an indication of the magma moving. The pulse, the beats, the low frequency events, the drum beat patterns, these could be signs of the next eruption. This is on the conversation. Rebecca Carey, Senior Lecturer in Earth Science, University of Tasmania, University of Tasmania. Predicting when a volcano will next blow is tricky business, but lessons we learned from one of Hawaii's recent eruptions may help. They're talking about, of course, Kilauea of last year. Kilauea volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii is probably the best understood volcano on Earth. That's thanks to monitoring and gathering information that extends back to the formation of the Hawaii Volcano Observatory in 1912. The volcano is also subject to the world's most technologically advanced geophysical monitoring network. From the skies, satellites collect data that show the changing topography of the volcano as magma moves throughout the internal magma plumbing system. Satellites also look at the composition of volcanic gases. From the ground, volcanologists use a number of highly sensitive chemicals, chemical and physical tools to further understand the structure of that magma plumbing system. And this helps us to study the movement of magma within the volcano. Earthquakes and vibrations. A linchpin of volcano monitoring is seismicity how often, where, and when earthquakes occur. Magma movement within the volcano triggers earthquakes and putting together the data on their location, a technique known as triangulation, tracks the path of magma underground. A newer technique, seismic interferometry, uses vibrations of energy from ocean waves hitting the distant shorelines that then travel through the volcano. Can you imagine that? Vibrations of the ocean waves also travel through the volcano. That I never knew. Changes in the speed of these vibrations help us map the 3D footprint of the volcano's magma plumbing system. We can then detect when, and in some cases how, the magma plumbing system is changing. This monitoring provides the pulse of the volcano during times of inactivity it's a baseline from which to detect change during volcanic unrest. This proved invaluable for earlier warning and the prediction of where and when of the eruption of Kilauea, May 3rd, 2018. The pulse of Kilauea includes cycles of volcano inflation, that is bulging, and deflation or contraction. As magma moves into and out of the storage region, at the summit of the volcano. The speeds of vibration traveling through the volcano are predictable during observations of inflation and deflation cycles. When the volcano bulges, the vibrations travel faster through the volcano as rock and magma is compressed. When the volcano contracts, these speeds decrease. We describe this relationship as two sets of data, the bulging contraction and the faster, slowing speed of vibrations is coupled. Something changed. Compared to our baseline, we saw a couple data shift 10 days before the Kilauea eruption on May 3rd. That told scientists the magma plumbing system had changed in a significant way. The volcano was bulging due to the buildup of pressure inside the magma chamber but the seismic waves were slowing down quite dramatically instead of speeding up. Our interpretation of the data was that the, the summit magma chamber was not able to sustain the pressure from an increasing magma supply, the bulge was too big, rock material started to break around the summit magma chamber. Breakage of the rocks perhaps then led to 
the changes of the summit magma system so that more magma could more easily arrive at the eruption site about 40 kilometers away. As well as Kilauea, such coupled data sets are regularly collected, investigated and interpreted in terms of magma transport to other volcanoes globally. Sites include Piton de la Fornese on Reunion Island and Mount Etna volcano in Italy. But our modeling was the first to demonstrate these changes in the coupled data relationship could occur due to weakening of the material inside the volcano before an eruption. The damage model that we applied can now be used for other volcanoes in a state of unrest, and this adds to the toolbox volcanologists need to predict the when and where of an impending eruption. So much data that we need help. When volcanoes are in a heightened state of unrest, the volume of information available from digital data and ground observations is extreme. Scientists tend to rely on observational monitoring first and other data when time and extra people are available. But the total amount of incoming data, such as from satellites, is overwhelming and scientists simply can't keep up with it. Machine learning might be able to help us. Artificial intelligence is a new kind, the kid on the block for interpreting uh, and the eruption prediction. Neural networks and other algorithms can use high volumes of complex data and learn to distinguish between different signal signals. Automated early alert systems of an impending eruption using sensor array ex exists for some volcanoes today, for example, Etna volcano in Italy. It's likely that artificial intelligence will make these systems more sophisticated in the future. Early detection sounds wonderful for authorities charged with public safety, but many volcanologists are wary of this. If they lead to multiple false alarms, that would uh, could slash trust in scientists for both managers of volcanic crises and the public alike. This is a cross-section of Kilauea, and you can see if you're about uh, 40 to 50 kilometers down, 40 uh, six times four, 20, 24 five miles down, you're bit pretty much into the uh, magma plume. So we'll keep that in mind because USGS sometimes states the depth in miles as opposed to kilometers, so we keep this in mind and we'll just keep them in, um, transfer, transfer the kilometers to miles. All right, here we are at Sizemore Berkeley. As you can see, we have a tremendous amount of earthquakes over California. Uh, unfortunately, there are people that uh, perhaps are not interested or they don't like the fact that I'm reporting on earthquakes. But this is something that is very extraordinary. These thousands of earthquakes that we're having every day in the California Ridgecrest area are not normal uh, events. And uh, we've had a very big earthquake, the 7.1 on July 5th, in the volcanic field, and that has triggered off earthquakes on the San Andreas, earthquakes around Long Valley Caldera up towards the north, as you can see here, Walker Lane Fault System, San Andreas Fault, they're all, and as we expected, we were even having, because of the 7.1 that we had here, an earthquake swarm around Yellowstone. And uh, this uh, area around New Madrid seismic zone has also picked up lately. Uh, let's go to Hawaii though for now. We've had a five magnitude in the Aleutians, shallow five magnitude within the hour, the red is within the hour, the blue is within the day, and the uh, yellow is in, past, in the past, past week. So let's go to Hawaii and you can see a tremendous amount of activity here as well today. The blue is today's as we said. Okay, we know that Mauna Loa has been changed to color code yellow on August, um, I think August 18th. All right, Pahala, you can see here, and here we have, basically it's the same magma chamber, as we have said before, Mauna Loa, K 
Kilauea, Lauihi, Pahala, all this is the same magma chamber with uh, columns, with openings, uh, with tubes, uh, uh, vertical tubes coming and feeding. Mauna Loa, Kilauea, Pahala, East Rift Zone, these are of course the fractures, and the Kilauea, which is an undersea seamount. And let's go to a closer vision of some of the earthquakes here. Okay, this is the Halema'umu crater. Okay, this is the crater, and uh, let's just take a look at some of them. All right, they're very shallow, as we can see. Very shallow. Okay, that's a kilometer depth of about five kilometers. Again, this is in kilometers, about three miles. Okay, three miles is five kilometers. This is minus, minus 0 0.3. Minus is means it's above sea level. Okay, about four and a half kilometers. As you can see, they're pretty small. And they're there. Okay, this is the activity. Let's go into the monitoring. We'll see the number of quakes as well. And of course, it is deforming, it is rising. The area is rising because it's filling with magma. Okay, in the past month, we've had about 500 earthquakes in the area in the past month. Okay, these are a couple of days ago, September 3rd. September 4th, two and a half. And let's go to the deformation. Oh no, 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 I'm sorry, I want to go back. I want to go back because some of these have been very deep. I'm sorry about that. Okay, this is very deep, 22 miles. 22 miles is 20 miles, 22 miles, 20 miles. Okay, this is the magnitude here, this is the depth about 19.3, 20 miles, that's pretty close to the, the, these, these quakes are into the magma chamber, 20 miles. Uh, I'm surprised, okay, 26 miles depth, these are in the magma chamber, 23 miles depth, this is not kilometer, this is miles, 20, 19, 18, Okay, 20, and you can see some of some of they're either very shallow or very deep. 28 miles depth, 28 miles depth. Yes, yeah, something's going on there. Something is, is definitely pounding away inside. Let's go to the deformation. Okay, this is the past two days tilt. Uh, past week tilt. Very strange, it's going down. Past month tilt, it's been raised, rising and then it's, it's really going down. What's happened there? From September 2nd up to today, it's really gone down. What happened? And uh, this, however, is showing it that it's uh, a tremendous, oh, sorry, what happened? It's uh, an inflation, as you can see, since last year's eruption. And this is last year, the eruption before last year's eruption. It dropped tremendously after the eruption. And you can see here it's building up at a much faster incline rate than this here before the eruption. And here we go again. The eruption, you can see the deformation. Summit GPS, change in distance between two global position system stations located on the sides of Kilauea caldera. Rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir Puo'o magma storage chamber. Above Puo'o change in distance between the two stations. A rapid increase in the distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or the Puo'o magma storage chamber. All right, here we go again. 
the GPS station very close to the edge of the crater, so it got uh, not hugely surprised to see that happening. Uh, that's because they lost the equipment. All right, that's past six months. But you can see that we have an inflation, meaning that the magma is recharging, the magma reservoir is increasing. A rapid increase in the distance can be attributed as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or Puovo magma storage chamber. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.